everybody. Uh, today we're going on a little trip to Orange in New South Wales, which is 250 kilometers from here. So the Addo won't make that distance on one charge. So we have to stop and charge somewhere. But uh, we're gonna try and do the NRMA charges because they're free at the moment. So if our first stop's gonna be Lifco, which is 132 kilometers from here, I believe. And we're just gonna use the app the ABRP app to show you what's going on. So here's the app and I've put in my location Linfield and then Orange and then we're gonna choose the plan, the route plan. All right, so total distance 250 kilometers and it says we should stop at Bathurst and charge on the fastest charger available because we want the fastest time and that's the Tesla charger. So we'll charge from 13% to 31%, so, so about 18% in the battery in order to get to orange in the fastest time. And that time will be three hours and 48 minutes, but we're not gonna do it like that. We're gonna take it, we're gonna um, go a little bit slower. We're gonna try and use the um, free charging network if it's available for us. Okay, so, all right. So that's, that's our route plan. And so well, we're gonna leave now. And it's, it's a bit cool today because it's winter in Sydney, so 12 degrees. So the battery will be, will be a little bit cold. And so off we go. Okay, okay so we're gonna use the um, Android Auto on board nav the navigation that comes with the car. So it says we're going to Lifco, so 132 kilometers in two hours, 30 minutes. And what have we got here? So we got 79% um, battery. I've reset the trip meter and it's 14 degrees outside. So for anybody who doesn't know, we're going to, we have to go over a mountain range, which is called the Great Dividing Range. It's about a thousand meters. So I expect to use a bit of battery doing that. And then we come down the other side. So hopefully we'll get some regen back. But we'll see how we go with this. So we're just leaving our leafy suburbs of Sydney. Um, for anybody who wants to know what it's like to live in Sydney, this is pretty much it. There's lots of, lots of trees on uh, this area. So a lot of foliage and, and today we're lucky to have a very nice sunny day -ish, <laughs> which is kind of fairly normal for us so did get a bit of rain last week but a um, beautiful day today So we're halfway through Sydney now, just going to hit Pennant Hills Road, which is uh, one of our main arterial roads. And we're going, to, we're going to go scenic way over to the Blue Mountains, which is, uh, for anybody who knows the suburbs, through the back of Castle Hill and Windsor. So some nice scenery to come. So I've turned on my Lane Keep Assist, and because I drive in the city most of the time, I normally don't have it on. So I've turned it on now and I've got the dreaded beeping sound of the car. So I can either turn it off or I'll have to go to the settings and work out why it keeps beeping at me. But it's the, um, it's the notification that I'm not driving in my lane properly. So I have to go to the settings and to maybe find that one to make it silent. I don't, I don't really like cars that beep at me all the time. And, uh, most people who get the auto free for the first time, they're going to have lots of noises. But if you know, once you start to read the manual and everything, you can have it so there's absolutely no, no sounds at all, which is how I like it. So um, I'm having, uh, I've turned on the lane keep assist system and I keep getting beeps. 
as you can hear from here. So this is the lane departure assist, I think. So I've got, it's set for warning. So I'm just going to turn that off. So, so I don't get any more beeps. And I think that disables the lane keep assist system as well. So the car's no longer going to. So this is this is Windsor. And uh, just up ahead of us is the Blue Mountains. So the reason why they call it the Blue Mountains for is there's a lot of eucalyptus trees. And they give off a gaseous eucalyptus um, gas. And uh, the air reacts with it to give like a blue tinge. And that's where the name Blue Mountains came from. That's why they appear blue in the photo in the video. So we're heading into a town called Richmond, which is uh, on the outskirts of Sydney. And getting, getting and in the background, I don't know if you can see it, but that's the, the mountain range that we're going, going to climb, the Blue Mountains. And this is a kind of a historic town history in Australia, only 200, what, 250, 240 years, so don't really have a lot of old buildings and stuff. This is, this is about as good as it gets. Just going past some areas which are famous for um, orchards, and a lot of apples come from this area. It's Bilpin. Okay, we just arrived at Lifco charging station and how many said 132 kilometers to the 132 kilometers, 38 percent left. Uh, so we're just going to charge here because this is a free charger. And um, so we've done 182 Ks. So another two EVs just showed up, so we just beat them by a minute, so it was fantastic. So we've got a Porsche beside us, and we're just charging at 45. So, yeah. so we just beat two other EVs, I'm so happy I normally don't beat, I'm normally the last one in the line, but now I'm the first, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. So we're just walking into Lifco, the main shopping area. So it's actually lunchtime now, so what we're charging, we'll get something to eat. Here's the start of the shops. Hopefully we can find something. It's a pretty quiet town on Lifco. But uh, a few old buildings. Hopefully a pie shop. What do you feel like for lunch then? Thai food. Thai food. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll go and see what they have. Cool. Just finished lunch in, uh, in Lifco and just had their Chinese lunch special, eleven dollars fifty, which was really, really excellent. So, oh, we're on eighty-eight percent. Just just finished lunch, came back eighty-eight percent, so that's pretty good. So we'll stop the charger now. Just did around a 40 minute, had a quick lunch, bit of, bit, bit of rush because we don't want to leave our car there and when it's finished charging, still have our car there. So we quickly rushed and had lunch, 40 minutes came back and the battery was at 88%. So that's pretty, pretty reasonable. And just as we left, a new, another Tesla came in. So chargers seem to be working okay at the moment, but uh, another, another few months, it's gonna be, NMA was going to start charging so probably make it easier to use chargers because at the moment they're non-stop charging while they're free Speed 
Islam ya. These black cows here are probably Angus. So we're just uh, coming up to Orange now. Just hit the hit the town. charge a battery in the daytime, not in the morning, because the battery is cold in the morning, so we get a faster charge if, if, if you charge um, when the day is warm and when your battery is warm after a drive. So we're going to come into Orange River around 55%, and 246 kilometers we've done. Let's work that out. So we started with 80 and then we went down to, what did we go down to, son? 32. So 48 and then we charged to 88 and we're down to 55 so that's another 33. 55 and 33, that's 88, basically 88 percent. We could have made it on one charge. Uh, I don't want to take the risk. And we need to stop anyway because after two hours driving we like to stop and have a little rest, stretch our legs, have lunch, all that sort of thing. So in the case of driving to uh, around 250 to to maybe 400 k's of range, there's no difference having an EV and having a petrol car because you're going to have to stop anyway for lunch or, or something like that so you can easily drive 200 plus 200 and have lunch and same same in time as a petrol car so up to 400 k's there's no difference between driving an EV and a petrol car as in time wise how long the journey is going to take so now we're going to head to NRMA for another free charge. So we just driven 250 k's, and it's basically not, it hasn't cost us anything. So if you're clever with the way you plan your journeys, yeah, you can get you can get free travel, which is amazing these days. Not only is it free travel, but it's the best 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 traveling car on the road. EVs are just amazing to drive. Nothing like petrol cars, they're just so much better, it's, there's no comparison. Here's a few Volvos, so even in Orange, <laughs> in the country now, they seem to be buying EVs. Yes, uh, now we're in the centre of Orange. or not. Google Maps doesn't, I'm not going to say anything yet, maybe it is alright. Somewhere down in there, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. There's that Tesla there. Uh, uh, we just went to stop at the orange charger and there's one person charging, one person waiting. So because we followed the rules of always be charging, we've got 58% battery so we could just drive off and come back later. We don't need to charge because we charged earlier. So um, yeah, it's a good ferry to have if you're ever doing road trips. If you don't know which charges are going to be busy and which ones are not. So we might just charge tomorrow on our way home or we might even drive to Bathurst and charge. So we no real need to, to get a We've done. We've already done our charge, so you can just sit and relax, or we'll go and see the sights of Orange. And this is one of them, the park. So this this is 
orange on a Saturday afternoon and it's pretty busy. Oh, there's a spot. Oh, look that one. So I just wanted to give you the, the stats on, on how we went today. So we did uh, 252 kilometers and we used 81% battery. And there's a lot of road work, so we probably weren't doing 100, 110 that, that, that often. And it's 13 degrees, so it wasn't that warm. So we averaged 17.4 kilowatt hours per 100 k's. And that's including going over the mountains at a thousand meters. So it's not, not too bad considering it's cold weather. Um, just one thing to be aware of. Uh, I had a little, someone, a little bump on my front bumper bar and now my lane keep assist does not work and i've got this one as well i think that's traffic sign so my lane keep assist does not work and my cruise control keeps on dropping off so i assume that the camera has moved or something's gone wrong so i don't know what to do with that we would take it to byd and they can recalibrate it or whether they're going to say well it's your fault and charge me to recalibrate the camera so I'm not sure if I'm gonna take the car in to get to get fixed or I'll have to contact them and see what they say I'm not sure if I'm gonna take the car in to get to get fixed or I'll have to contact them and see what they say uh, uh, One other thing too. I've I found the air conditioning controls really hard to operate with Android Auto I know you can you can back out of Android Auto by going How do we get it? Uh, let's uh, What map is this? don't even know yes yeah, so hard uh so this is and this is android auto map so how do i back out uh yep this one back out byd and then i can find the air conditioning controls but i wanted to actually put the defrost on the back window so i'm not even sure if that's the that says front i'm not even sure where the rear demister is so i'm gonna have to read the instruction manual again because uh yeah this car's really hard to operate when Android Auto is working. I tried using Google please to, to demiss the back window and all that stuff, it couldn't understand me. So I couldn't actually, while I was driving, I couldn't even turn the demister on to demiss the rear window. It was all fogged up and there's nothing I can do because maybe I should read the manual again, but I can't even find it. I have, how air conditioning settings, what is it? Where is this, where is this thing? Fan speed auto recirculate. Yep, I don't even know where it is. So, so yeah, you can put a comment in. So, um, yeah, it's getting yeah. Like like I keep complaining about it. After six months of using the car, I fully understood most of the things I knew how it worked. And now, now I went on a road trip again, and I'm going. Oh, I've got to learn everything again. And I'm I'm. Now I've got Android Auto that always wants to run, and I can turn it off, I know. But it is it is good to use, but it just limits your ability to use any other controls in the car. So, yeah, hopefully I'll get better at it. But anyway, that's, that's the end of today's video. So, yep, we had a fantastic trip, by the way. Um, EVs are so good on road trips, it's incredible. It's so com such a comfortable car, so much, yeah, enough power. For a, for a little SUV, the handling is superb through all the corners and stuff. Even though everybody bags the car and says the suspension's soft. After six months owning this car, I think I'm starting to whinge at the suspension. St <laughs> starting to become hard. I want it softer. So, yeah, but it's, I guess it's just what you're used to, I guess. But, yeah, so, so yeah, very happy with the car. Very happy with the purchase. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll keep driving. And so we're just going to finish off at uh, Orange Botanic Gardens just before it gets dark. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video and this is what it's like in, around Orange now. Yeah. Oh, if you look over there in the distance, that's Mount Canobolus, which is the last peak in the scenery. You can actually climb it, and I have actually climbed that mountain. All right, we're going to go for a look in the Royal Botanic Gardens, so see you in the next video.